as Cyberdog grew and I, like I say, love music, I would go to these clubs and, and sort of see, you know, and sort of be inspired and think, how could I bring something to these guys? KillerKellerOfficial.com THTC, the UK's leading ethical streetwear label. Organically grown and ethically built garments from hemp, organic cotton and other sustainable materials. 2019 is their 20th anniversary year. Join me with THTC as a Killer Keller podcast sponsor celebrating music, social activism, hemp and street culture. THTC, eco-fashion redefined since 1999. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. We're going to have a crack. Let's give it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Killer Keller podcast, live and direct, central London and central as you need to be. You don't need to be anywhere else anyway. It's a, it's a beautiful morning. Uh, the birds are humming and the bees are flying. And uh, yeah, we're doing it like this. Big shout out to Graffiti Kings inside the place without question. And uh, everybody else, our regular listeners and viewers, you know what time is it? Share, share. Sharing is caring and all that business. Um, I'm Killer Keller, your conduit and uh, the vehicle. And we are very, very lucky, you know, as we were just saying <laughs> before we went live, you know, this is a David Attenborough moment. Yeah. Very rarely do you get to see this, this lady uh, in, in the flesh and, uh, and busy as well. The, the iconic uh, cyber dog. Um, for those of you outside of town or completely stuck under a rock somewhere, uh, purveyors of the rave mythology and fashion and style and the lady behind it is Terry Davy. what are we saying girl yeah. we have to do that or whatever it is these days we can make up our own one we do it our way over there on the podcast <laughs> alright what are you saying you're good yeah I'm good I'm good I'm very very surprised to see you here girl um yeah I am pretty tired you yeah. always say yeah. yeah was it a bit of a was it a bit of a a neck breaker this 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 week for you yeah, it was because obviously we were trying this stuff and it was quite sort of like intense and different mm. and like techy and uh, For sure. so there was a lot could go wrong and yeah. so it was yeah pretty full on. <laughs> Cyber dog getting techy, the, the irony. <laughs> yeah, well we're meant to be techy, you know. Yeah. So I want to always try something different, but uh, yeah, this was intense because obviously the situation as well and everyone Mad. remote and trying to do limited rehearsals and everyone all, all, under all the precautions mm-hmm. that we had to do. So it was pretty tough, to be honest. Yeah, I would imagine so. <laughs> um, I saw, that. Uh, just a side note, I saw, I was in the gym and I saw um, the Friends cast on the Emmys. On the Emmys, they were doing the, the, the Zoom thing and uh, there was uh, there was the whole cast there was... <laughs> Bust up together on the cat, and I thought, hold on, this kind of defeats the object, you know. Like, if you're going to be together like that, you might as well just like be in the studio. That's it. It is really mad, and like, I think you know, you don't, you've got the guidelines, but mm. then it's kind of vague. So you just kind of like, you know, keep it all. For this, I put them all in morph suits as well, so like that they were. Also, already got an extra covering because you just you just got to kind of try <laughs> and follow it. the rules as well, and and try to pull it off because I really wanted to do a live event as well, so. But anyway, we managed it. We managed it, killed yeah. it. Um, morph suits. I mean, that's hilarious. That is just too cool for me. <laughs> I love it. it is. Oh, man. I mean, where to begin? Where to begin, really? I mean, 94, the beginning. I mean, mid rave Raving era. since 94. Yeah, raving yeah. since 94. Well, actually, before, we really started from a tiny stall. So. But I just don't, I don't know, those, those years blurred. Yeah. So, 94. 94, we got our first shop. Like, a kind of fi- first little kind of permanent sort of right. spot in Camden. The same spot you're in now or did you upgrade no, this No, no, yeah, yeah. So we started from a little stall. Mm. So you used to have to queue up at the crack of dawn, you know, and get your little table because it was like that, mm. you know, mm. uh, like all the markets were back then. Mm. And then um, then we found this chunk of land that was sort of like a dumping ground. Mm. And so we were on the queue for like a, a, a permanent pitch. So we said, can we have that? And they were like, yeah, if you clear it out, you can have that. So... We did, and then we kind of like blacked it all out and painted graffiti and put scaffold, and that was the first cyber dog sort of stall. Mm. Then it moved to a tunnel, and then it moved to these catacombs. They so got quite big, and then because they developed that, um, we had we had to move, and that's when our our store is now, where they said, "Look, we'll dig you out a basement, and you could do what you want." And that's what we did. Dug out the basement as well. Yeah, because it's an old listed building and we've got our offices right. and that there. Um, but they basically dug it out. So the shop, that's why you go in and then there's the escalators down and mm. all that basement that's crazy. was dug out for us. That's, I mean, it's, it's it's actually uncanny. Like, I can't remember 
an air of culture. I was in a part where Cyberdog wasn't aff either affiliated or seen or, do you know what I mean? That's yeah. just mad. Yeah, I think what it was is like, to be honest, when I started, it's just because I was a raver. You know, I was really part of even the illegal rave scene mm. and then obviously with the criminal justice bill, it was, mm. you had to kind of like, you had to be legalised, put in clubs. So I was just a real raver. And I always loved clothes and was always making my own clothes. And I just couldn't find clothes that really fitted that scene. Mm. So that's why I started Cyberdog. It wasn't like a big plan. It was more my own needs. Yeah. Like, I was like, I really... Yeah. And then they had all these neon lights and I was knew that there must be neon inks out there for printing and because I, I was, you know, thinking you know, they used that kind of stuff in the 70s, all trippy. So um, I seeked it out and I, you know, that was what was the inspiration right from the beginning and I love technology and mm. science so I kind of see it as the future, I did. And I remember walking into one of these clubs and just feeling like I'm at home, you know. So. Wow. I really very early wanted to recreate that feeling of a club inside our shop or stall. So even right back in the day when we had this like stall, we had banging music and it was all neon, darkened and neon. And um, so it was Crazy. just for that. It was just really, yeah, I, I've got to be honest, it wasn't like a big business plan. It was just like I really couldn't find clothes to match it, so I made them. Sounded like, it sounds to me like there was a real force. You were very much like, yo, we're doing this. This is happening. We've got to make this happen. Yeah, you mentioned the criminal justice bill and all the other elements that are out against everything. That yeah. Was, you must have been, right now, this is a, this is a uh, mission brief. This yeah. Is a and thing. because for me, like, music is the connection between, mm. between humans. I mean, it's a bit, but I generally feel that, you know, I really f so yeah. much feel when it, that music connects us. You know, you might have your inner group, you know, but music connects you a bit wider. Mm. I actually think it's a human need. So music is Whoa. so, so important to me. Mm, truth. And uh, so the music, it was really what it was about, you know, and mm. going back to when I walked into the clubs, it was that connection you felt. Mm. And it wasn't just if you were like on drugs, you know, it was that people connected through the music. Mm. So that was why really early I sort of, saw that that is what I wanted. I wanted music or part of it. You walked in there in the club. And even today, you see that, you know, that people that visit the store, you know, they enjoy the experience. Like, mm. you know, some of them might never have been in a club, but they enjoy it and True. they connect. And um, that's really important for me. Super important. Actually, now you come to mention it. I mean, we're talking... It's actually always suppressed, by the way, throughout history. What? You know, it's looked at savvy, you know, all, if you look back, all this music connection, mm. it's always, and then the criminal, you know, it's always something's trying to suppress us from yeah. connecting through music. Yeah, it's true, isn't it? It is. Yeah, like Woodstock. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? As Everything. far back as then. Yeah. That's a really good point. I've thought about that before. Uh, how, did, how, like we were just saying, you were just saying about the, the kids, that they, 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 some of them have an experience, where they walk into your store... And they see, it's almost like you're, it's their first introduction. There's, there's quite a responsibility to that, isn't there? Well, I just think well, we're doing it what it is and I hope they enjoy it. Most people do. Yeah. And it could even be, you know, older people, middle-aged people that maybe have never seen anything like it. And they or may not want to buy the clothes, but on the whole, mm. I think they leave the store and, and have enjoyed the experience. 100%. And then obviously we... You know, I see, the I visual see. stuff. When I'm in, in like, well. when I'm in like Hamden, right? I know if like I roll in about, I think we're about five thirty, six thirty <laughs> into Cyberdog. You know, it's that preliminary stage. You kind of walk in and you think, right, well, am I drunk enough to go to a rave? <laughs> Let's go into Cyberdog and just make sure. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> the okay. test ground. Yeah, yeah, it's a test ground, isn't it? You know, and if you're lucky, you walk out with a woolly hat. It's, you know what I mean? If it ain't too hot, but um. Let's go back. Let's really take it back because there's going to be some people out there that are chewing at the bit that want to know about the rave days. Uh, you were in the mix. You were there from, from the jump. Yeah. We talk about Rat Pack. We talk about D DJ Psy. We talk about, like, uh, Ratty. I mean, the list goes on. You yeah, know yeah, I mean? yeah. Even early Groove Riders and Shy FXs, we know that you was representing. <laughs> right? Um, but so let's, let's get into that. So, because what I want to know is... Uh, by the end of it is how how in your approximation uh, it had differed once it went into clubland. So let's get into the, the, the okay. organics of it. All. So back in you know when it first sort of exploded, 
So that was sort of like late 80s, right? Um, 80s, mid to late, late, I don't know, I was, you know. So there was, these, on one. Yeah, <laughs> there was these raves, right? So you would hear, you, you know, we didn't have mobile phones. Yeah. You basically would hear word of mouth and, and the orbital, which was the M25, it was basically, you'd go around that and someone would say to you like, go to that service station, you find out and you'd go there and you'd be in your little banger car and what? and then you'd get there and you go yeah 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 and you go there and th you'll find out where you go next mm. in the end you'd lead to where the rave was and i mean it was just awesome it was just like no sms's back then no yeah. what's that nothing <laughs> no nothing nothing um you know and uh so that is how it was you know you'd literally follow and it was often around the m25 that you would find the meeting points where you could get the next point of information wow and um so obviously then the Criminal Justice Bill now, date-wise, I think it was around 94 as well, mm -hmm. maybe 92. You know, I can't remember. You're going to quote me, but I don't know. I can't remember right now. That come out and they basically, it still stands as well. It's still illegal for more than, I think it's 10 people to gather and move to repetitive beats. I mean, you know, they literally <laughs> try to shut it down. Yeah. So, I mean... Um, and they came in quite hard, you know. Uh, so basically, you know. Forceful. Forceful. Like yeah, and... yeah. Like I say, throughout history, it's always sort of seen as oh, you're sort of a bad thing. Yeah. And, you know, and actually people were pretty harmless, you know. Yeah. They were just enjoying the music yeah. and grouping. So that kind of forced it into the clubs. And then, um, so, but, you know, by then you had uh, like the Shoom, like in all the second summer of love that had gone in Ibiza, because I also go to Ibiza all the time. So they kind of brought back uh, this kind of mix of the sound of sort of techno with like the uh, Balearic beat. And so they started these club nights and the clubs in the 90s, early 90s were just... Popping. Oh, I mean, every night I would be out, every night there was an amazing night on. Top uh, Top three... Club nights at that, at that time. At that time, well, I, I went to Shoom. I went. Um, I used to love Heaven um, on a Monday night. Um, there was this kind of like trippy kind of one, like as at least in its decor, called Megatripolis. Um, whoa, 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 yeah. Where, 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 I'm trying to think where that was. Oh, I can't even remember because there was so there was so many more clubs then as mm. well. Mm. Um, so like you literally, like I say, like me and my mates, we would. You know, we'd have almost a schedule. Mm. And um, and then obviously music diversifies. So like, you know, you, we're talking the early start was real acid, you know, it was real acid house. Yeah, that kind of happy era. Yeah. And then it sort of diversified and you got the techno and like I say, the Balearic beat came in. Mm. So you'd start having more house techno and... Um, and then you'd have other, other things, garage jungle. and jungle yeah. and all this. And, and as, you know, because I love music, you see, and that is why I design like that, because music sort of diversifies like a tree. Mm. So from one genre, you sort of see how it sort of spreads out mm. and little other genres come from that. Yeah. And so as Cyberdog grew and I, like I say, love music, I would go to these clubs and, and sort of see you know, and sort of be inspired and think, how could I bring something to these guys, mm. to this scene? Mm. And that was like the um, fetish scene and, um, uh, you know, those clubs were real banging techno. Oh, my God, like, yeah, the emo side yeah, of Yeah, and they were quite yeah. sort of traditional gothic style. That's right. And so I, I went to some of those clubs and they were pretty extreme back then. Mm. And uh, I, But I thought, like, you know, they could have a bit of colour and... So I started doing stuff for them and adding little flashes of colour and um, they kind of embraced it. And yeah, then this whole did. kind of term, if I'm honest, cyber goth, yeah. sort of wasn't there until these this scene. Yeah, oh, yeah. buck so, stops here, well, baby. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But it's true. Yeah. It is true. <laughs> <laughs> so that, you know, so all these different scenes kind of... And they're all, you know, youth, you know, we like to unite, mm. you know, we like to belong. And I express... Um, I love people to express their individuality, mm. but I also know that we've got that longing within us to sort of belong as well. Yeah, unify as a one yeah. nation under a yeah. groove. Sort of yeah, again, yeah. going back to the... Um, music unites us. The music. Yeah, the, the, and this is where Cyberdog, I feel it kind of moved with the times of, uh, of what Camden was saying and what the city was saying and um, that, that hybrid of, uh, of heavier industrious music combined with... The rave era, London and um, Camden went into that direction pretty heavily, from what I remember, you know. And 
you, you, yeah, you, you guys kind of became the, the, the spearhead fashion of, of that, of that club culture, didn't you? Yeah, I, I, we did, I suppose, because I do remember, because obviously I was still clubbing, still yeah, yeah. club, still club. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, I remember going out and starting to see Cyberdog in these, cl- like, clothes, mm. in these cl- clubs and being, like, sort of ex-eyed, like, I couldn't believe it, like, wow, these people are wearing it. Mm. But, yes, and looking back, you know, it didn't take long till, you know, it was... Um, very much seen as an association yeah. within the club lands. That's mad. What's the... This is, this is probably more of a question for the university students who are probably sitting there right now taking some notes. So this is joyous, right? You, uh, you see something like that. What's your process? What's your first initial... OK, how am I going to... Create is one thing, but how am I going to take it to a temperature that is legitimate and authentic enough for them to grab it. Yeah, well, like I said, I don't think that tactically, if I'm honest. Really? No. But what I think is, like, I kind of just, like, think, well, what can I bring here? Mm. And I, I really honestly almost have, like, little kind of matrix moments where I think, this is what I want to try to do, mm. so let me try. And I really honestly, that is how we, I still operate today. Mm. It's more how I think I can do next, what can I do next or what can I explore or what can I bring to this now and then I'll just stick to the programme, you know, that's what I do because I can't really analyse it too much because I think that would squash me. So I just kind of stick to the programme, I kind of have an idea and then I try to realise it. So it's uh, inspiration meets synergy meets all these things that just a good idea and... making it watertight. Yeah, and I think if, like, you're talking, like, students, like, one thing I think I'd really love to do is is try to show young kids, you know, that actually you can do something. For if real. you follow your heart, and I mean, mm. I know it sounds naff, but actually you can, and you can start from nothing yeah. as well. So we did. We started from nothing, you know, and little tiny stall. I mean, it is work, but it's fun, mm. you know, that... I think the early days is even more fun because <laughs> free. But I think if you can follow your kind of what your idea is and just try to realise it mm. and believe that you could do it, yeah. I really generally think you can. And that is something I wouldn't, I would even like to sort of explore sort of lecturing or mentoring on that because I'm, a, I'm passionate about supporting young creatives because mm. I know it's so difficult. Oh, yeah. And a lot of people don't, you know, don't necessarily have opportunities that they've been given as uh, yeah. from birth, you know. That's There's, right. And I don't, didn't either. So, you know, they need that encouragement, though, to mm. have that belief sometimes that you can do it. All right, mm. you know, you may have come from this background or this background, but, you know, keep at it keep mm. and keep it real. It's Terry Davies saying this. No <laughs> jokes in here, the Killer Killer podcast. Yeah, you're absolutely right. People, people are born in society in a particular way. Um... You've got to enjoy what you do. I think that is the mass, the, the most, most important thing. You've got to enjoy what you do. If you can, you know, just get by mm. on doing something you love, mm. then you're on a winner yeah. for the rest of your life. And be on your front foot as well. Because one thing I find, particularly after speaking so much on podcasts about it, and it, it relates on so many, so many industries, that, that if, you're, if you're going for it and nothing is getting in your way you know hook or by crook if you've got to eat packs of noodles and sleep on sofas it's, it's the the universe does have a way and it's and it may f- be incremental like really <laughs> small but there are small mercies for developing and getting better and slowly this snowball starts taking effect and if you're in the right place at the right time you boom yeah i think it is that and so i think obviously looking back it was other people were looking for clothes mm. to wear to this scene. So, what? But it didn't start with me thinking, "Oh, I'm going to do this, and everybody's going to want that." So, I don't know. For me, so that would be my advice. Like, you've probably got, you know, people out there have got an idea, mm. and actually, whatever they're doing, probably other people will want. Yeah, but there's, right. there's so much emphasis on um, success, mm. whereas I think. Um, you know, if we looked at success of finding happiness in what we do, oh. then you're already on the right path. That's kind of success by definition, isn't it? Yeah. It should be anyway. It should be. But, you know, we've all got bills to pay and mm. 
pressures and think so you know obviously we need money therefore yeah, you yeah. know it, it, we all do this silly to say but i think you know if your motivation can come from that mm. rather than wanting success mm. then you know, you're already on a winner, like mm. I say. And success can come. There's so many, you know, and I believe in this creative consciousness, you know, that's out there. Mm. And um, there's amazing talents that I see in the... Do you? Yeah. Do you see some crazy... Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Um, the, with the industry, with the fashion industry especially, the, uh, the, the front end expenses of even just doing up a, a mock version of an outfit it can run into some costs off the back on it that must have been for, for a startup like yourselves at the time that must have been a, a pretty hell raising like time of like no no neon <laughs> yeah <laughs> want neon well we literally <laughs> knocked 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 on printers doors saying yeah. like uh would you would you find neon ink for us yeah. and print these t-shirts you know some t-shirts for us and they were like well, how many do you want uh 10 and they were like no shut the door shut it was like really yeah and then actually it was in kilburn we found one that went yeah, all right, we'll give it a go. See North Weezy coming through again. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, we like we'd cut up stuff on the floor and like screen print and put it together ourselves on the floor. And even now, um, our clothes are made in London from our organically grown maybe warehouse That's and awesome. production unit. What, whereabouts is that? It's, it's in, in uh, well, It's in that glamorous place of uh, Canning Town. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tight. yeah, good old East. Yeah, and um. And we moved there because these printers moved there mm. and we stayed with them until they closed and then we ended up doing our... We've got our own print unit as well. Oh. And um, all our T-shirts are hand-printed and we cut I the clothes, we buy the trim, it, we make everything in <gasps> London. So, OK, so fast-forward a little bit because here's a, uh, uh, an intrigued Killer Keller walking into, <laughs> walking into Cyberdog with a collab that's you and Kappa. Yeah. So how were they created? Right, so, yeah, Cap, um, so we got approached to do this uh, collaboration with Kappa yeah. and um, I, they said, well, look, you know, I could design what I wanted, but obviously, you know, um, and I thought, do I want to do the, you know, sports? But then I thought, well, why not, you know, why not sort of have a go at it and, and have a mash-up? So it I, worked, by the way. Loved it. <laughs> Loved it. Thanks. I got Willie yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the so basically, I, they you know I presented it to them and they loved. They said yeah 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 let's do two collections. You can do you know and they gave me a lot of freedom sort mm. of more or less you know whatever I wanted to do. So I did this first drop that was much more experimental and that was me looking at okay let's look at these kind of classic tracksuit and mash up in cyberdog styles and across the genres. Mm. So there was sort of like one that was harder and more cybery and one that was, you know, more sculptured mm -hmm. and, and all the kind of areas that I like to design. And then this new one uh, was all about this united music. And I mean, it seems even more relevant now yeah, when we've yeah. all been locked out. That's right. And uh, so uh, that one was more bringing back the old school to the new generation because I also really want to... Um, I'd love that the kids of today could really feel that yeah. vibe of those yeah. early, early raves. Yeah. So I really wanted to do a quite a, quite a ravey collection. Mm. And, um, you know, seeing that if you uh, cover Kappa's uh, head, um, heads, they, they, they look like something, you know, putting a smiley look funky as fuck. between love their it. legs and all yeah, that. Yeah. And Kappa were amazing. They were really supportive because when I showed them that uh, logo, for example, and that print, I was thinking, oh God, they might. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go. That's, right a step, <laughs> that's a step too far. But they were like, they liked it, and they sort of saw the fun side in it, and um, and uh, yeah, so that's how that happened. So Big shout out to Rich PR, by the way, who got us down there, man. It was wicked. Yeah, yeah. That was a vibe. That was a proper vibe. Um, yeah, the mashup, the mashup, and you know, all your legacy, all you created over the years, this, it feels like, um, yeah, there is a connectivity. That, yeah, and you know how cycles happen in fashion and music. Yeah. So it's always a cycle. It kind of feels like now it's that cyber dog time. It feels like the mashup. Big shout to Dr. Noki as well inside <laughs> the place. You know, the mashup and everything that it stands for, Kappa and what you've done there, it, it's, it is marrying two, two worlds, but uh, it feels like the throwback is right. And it feels like it's a it's a rave age again. I feel that you know, and I my last collection was called Rave Evolution, <laughs> and because I felt it in the 
air, you know, like yeah. it was it was time. Mm. It's time for these, you know, because we were all feeling and that was before the whole lockdown and COVID situation, you know. Mm. It was always it was already kind of unrest and sort of like you could see yeah. the kids were getting out there and we were all sort of uniting and starting to wanted to address the issues and then obviously, you know, what's happened since yeah. as well. So I think um yeah, again, it, yeah, it just so happened that mm. it's this time, but I de definitely also think it's the right time. It's mm. the right time now. You've got to have a... You've got, uh, my mate Normski, you know, Mr Normski, mm. he said you've got to have a lifetime to, to have a legacy. When, when I think of, like, your legacy right now, which is kind of... It's all because you, you've got so much more. You've got so much more ahead, but, like, you know, there's vintage Cyberdog now. Yeah, yeah, it's that's like, right. <laughs> I remember, I remember when it wasn't, you know, yeah. that, that's kind of crazy. It must completely blow your mind when you see that stuff now. I think because I'm still so involved every day, I don't always get to see it until yeah. maybe I'm being interviewed or something happens and I look back and I think, yeah, it's like, like well, someone must say like, oh, you know, it's it's a, a heritage brand now and that, mm. really? Like, I sort of don't really... <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah, I, I suppose, yeah, for that length of time it kind of is. But you, when you're living it, you don't always see it, you know, you don't always see it. But, yeah, there's a vintage side. Yeah, 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 it's mad. It's cute. You need a whole, new, whole new shop. It's yeah. just like the vintage side. <laughs> you know, going into the shop, when, when I, and for those of you that don't live in England, it's, just, you know... You, it's almost like it should be on like the tourist board. Go to Cyberdog. <laughs> yeah. It's really, isn't it? You know? I think it has been. It has on, to be. Yeah, it has been in some of those tourist guides. That stop. We have little, well, obviously prior to this. Yeah, you know, you'd have yeah. little coach tours that stopped outside to come do their visit. Mad. <laughs> See, what's your shop doing? Come on, yeah, no. it's gold. So you get there and you've got like these two big pillars of like. Dogs, mummified looking dog robot thing. Cyborgs. Right? Yeah, cyborgs. <laughs> and then we get on in and then you've got like oh, the whole neon pop off, dancers everywhere, things that are flashing. And then, yeah, and then you get people greeting you and get on in down the down the escalators. I mean, you already feel like you're in an illegal rave warehouse. Yeah, cold. Which is cold as fuck, <laughs> you know, it's cold. Like who designed all of that? Who, did, who built that as an idea and concept? Well, because it, it's organic grown so obviously like I say all the way back down to the little stall we already kind of had that concept so as we grew and moved spaces we could add to it mm. so then there's sort of artists that we'd work with they still work with that developed the, like the mannequins the early ones <laughs> and then obviously we'd move on with that and then as we've grown we've been able to add bits in technology and uh, you know uh, so it's kind of organically grown like that so um, and from I don't know because you didn't vi maybe not visited the, the the store before, which was all inside the catacombs. But I that had a lot it. of visuals as well. But um, we're always adding to it as mm. well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is a walking into it. It is it's a, it's breathtaking <laughs> to a point because, like you say, it it takes a while for these things to develop, and before you know it, it's got its own thing. Um, a lot of people that are starting out on, on this tip. Um, they, they they build uh, outfits and stuff to provide for a scene. The scenes are micro scenes, a lot of them. Rave at its time was so big. Yeah. yeah. The shop, even as it stands now, wasn't the rave of then. You've kind of, like you say, you've moved on and you've ebbs and flows, you've developed with it. But if you're, an, if you're a f fashion artist, a creator, stylist, and you want to find the next wave, the next genre yeah what do you what's your advice what's the best way to go about i mean i know it's instinctive and i know in it's, fashion yeah in fashion well i think it is uh, like i say for me i get inspired from music and but i mean if you wanted to give uh to general advice i think well you can always look at what hasn't been done you mm -hmm. know what hasn't been done yet and just sort of experiment with that because definitely in the early days that is what i I would do, and I still try to do um, in, in many of the more conceptual um, items that I design. Mm. It's just like, okay, what can I do next? You know. Mm. So for me, I like to look at what's been done next, and so I think um, if someone is in fashion and thinking, well, what can I do? I think you've also going back to you've got to enjoy or feel like it's something you want you mm. would wear. Mm. I still design. Even if I can't wear all of it, maybe now. Or maybe I do. Uh, but, you know, I don't. Killing it. But I still can think if I was, like, in this world, you know, it's a bit of a fantasy for me. So mm. I can put 
myself in that place and think, well, it, you know, if I was in that world, what would I want to wear? Mm. And um, so I think it's it's looking at what hasn't been done. I mean, obviously, you can also look back back and re-mash it. You know, that's another... Because it goes in cycles. Yeah, it yeah. goes in cycles. Um, I, You know, I think anything like that is a way that somebody could look at, right, what can I do next? And mm. then they could come up with that winning... Forward. Almost look at the forecast and from... I generally don't follow the whole fashion don't you? forecast. No, so I don't. So do you, know, do you know, I mean, just in terms of new upcoming, like the sports bangers, the wavy garms, the Dr. Nokis? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you follow, do you, do you see these guys and... Yeah, yeah, I, was, I mean, uh, I know Wave Gums, uh, Wave Gums, I see their, uh, you know, and I, I love that they're doing it and I love their mm. approach, yeah. you know, as well. It's mm. like real kind of, and, and that, see, see, that's new. Mm. The way even, even their, the way their Instagram is and yeah. um, I think uh, things like that, they just thought, well, what's new, what's fresh? Yeah. You know, let's just be fresh and... Um, so, yeah, I admire all that uh, people like yeah. that. Yeah. Lanes are important, aren't they? Yeah. But, 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 but the integrity. I always feel like with the new guys coming up, it's like because it's because it's a tough world out there and it's a tough scene, you've got to be headstrong. So you've got to take what they're doing deadly serious because it's just another world compared to... Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, as I've grown, yeah, we've been sharped a few times. So I think because I'm quite sort of open, um, I've learned to be more savvy, mm. but... Um, yeah, sadly, you have got to be a bit protective of things. Thick, thick skin. But I think also now we've got social, everything's out there. Mm. So it's almost like you just got to move on, you know, mm. you just got to rise above it and just do something else because there, there is still sharks and sort of like people that copy stuff. Mm. And uh, yeah. when you're young and grow, starting out, that is super annoying. Mm. But I think uh, you just got to try to sort of just move on from it. Mm. Do you yeah. ever get like um? Do you ever get like people? I bet they do actually, because you're kit and caboodle. You're foot. You're you're cyber dog through and through. But I bet you any money there will be these people that walk down the road and see you and they're like, she likes cyber dog a bit, doesn't she? Like, <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, because it's like I do wear cyber. So dog. sick. Mainly because I don't have time to shop. No, no. It's because yeah, I, I do. Rock that yeah, I would. I I I don't know. I because I was always quite a mad dresser. Yeah. You know, I always loved clothes. It was my costume. Um, yeah, I don't know because I think I'm like I say a fantasist. So I used to like sort of getting, and that was clothing was how I could do that. Um, so I mean, obviously you get judged, but I hate judgment so, so much. Do I. And I mean, I, you can't deny that it's still we're all human. Yeah. That it can affect you. Mm. Um, and obviously people that work for me as well that come out mm. from that. And I know because I was even more extreme mm. when I was young. You know how difficult. That is to try to rise above it. Mm. But the older you get, the more you don't give a shit. Yeah, I didn't know if I could say that. No, no, but yeah. No, oh, it's your podcast, so, you can say what you want. <laughs> but, but the reason why I bring it up is, is because of the individuality side. Yeah. Because um, I think anybody with a free mind and, a, and an idea and, again, just to, to inspire the, the bovine and, you know, anyone that's getting into the, the world of fashion or anything, you know, it's, it's, sometimes you've got to embody it. You, yeah. To the point that it becomes you and you are it. Yeah, right? yeah. I suppose so. I suppose, well, for me, you know, I probably wouldn't have been able to sign that if it wasn't, I was already, wasn't already like that, yeah. you know. So, yeah. And I think, because obviously I embrace individualism and, and, and self-expression. Mm. So, you know, we've had, you know, met all types of people mm. and people wear our clothes back to front, cut up, and I don't care, you know, you know, whatever oh, way so you want to wear yeah, it. Yeah. And, um... But I also understand that some people don't want to stand out so mm. much, you know, um, so they might want to be. So I don't judge them either. You know, you can't judge people just because they don't want to be extreme. Mm. The same as I don't think you should judge someone that wants to be extreme, mm. you know. And um, But I, sadly, you are. And yeah. I think, yeah. uh, you know, it's it just there's no place for any of that in mm. any kind of... It's a prejudice at the same time. There's, no, there's no place for any of yeah, that, yeah. None of that in shit. our world. No, none, none of, of that it. shit. Um, fashion, particularly with Cyberdog, like you say, and right, rightfully so, there's the minimal kind of characters that are just, you know, I'm going to... Like me, for instance, you know what I mean? I'm not... Contrary to popular belief, <laughs> I, uh, you know, I do have some restraint, especially uh, with royalty here, the fashion <laughs> variety, all right? I'll try to keep it down. But um, there is that side. And then the other side is... The extreme yeah. cyber dog. What's the most extreme cyber dog fan you've ever come across? 
What person? Oh, I yeah. don't know. I don't I don't know because I, I keep their um, privacy and I wouldn't necessarily look for them. But, I mean, obviously I see people and it's great just because yeah, as a designer, um, it means I can still design that crazy shit yeah. and someone might, might <laughs> but, you know, buy it and wear it. Um so I can't, I can't think of the, you know, a person, but obviously even people that work in the shop. So we've got some, you know, some that are really extreme and wear the most extreme pieces. Yeah, yeah, I bet. So like I say, as a designer, that's great because um, I'm going to design them anyway. Mm. And I'm often sort of designing them for, well, they may not, you know, no one might want it, but at least I've done it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I love to see that. But then it's the same if someone wants to buy a little piece of it and they enjoy, mm -hmm. yeah, a T-shirt. You know, why not? Even so love sick. goes into them, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's all uh, mutual love across the whole There is a lot catalog. of care in them, yeah. Yeah, I bet. Especially, like, you've got the machines on board, in-house. That's yeah. crazy. And that. always looking for, like, new inks and stuff and processes, yeah. How often do you go into the creative process in your head? Because, you know, you're, you're, a, you're a fashion creator, a stylist. You've got the vision, but, but you know, how... How do you, with all the runnings and out, incomings, outgoings you, 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 you go through in a day, especially with London Fashion Week, how much time do you put, do you sit down with a pen and paper or whatever? Yeah, oh, well, if I'm really honest, um, I, these, you know, I'm so busy that these days when I actually design a collection, I design it quite quickly. So generally it starts off with, uh, um, I really like to write stories and I'm actually back in the day I used to write a Cyberdog comic um, and there's characters behind it, that's another story. But... Um, <laughs> And that's a bit of money for you. Right? <laughs> and little Save stories. And the story would give me the name of the collection. Sick. And that's generally true. I've still Sick. got the comics. Um, so I still kind of operate like that, except I don't have time to do, you know, do a story. But I like to come up with a kind of name of the collection and a kind of vibe of it. Mm. And then things come from that. And then generally how I work is I design the more extremer side of that first you know mm. so i'll sketch out them and think yeah like, like, and that's where my kind of well, what hasn't been done or what can i do next and and so the title sort of leads me and then i can give briefs to artists saying you know this the collection this kind of thing i think we could do something like mm. this and um so it all kind of comes from a, a yeah i'm very visual looking at it now mm. you know i need a kind of story in my mind and I'll get the story and then I think, okay, so this is what this collection's going to be. Did you ever go to the art, uh, fashion or no, arts college? No, I didn't go to fashion college. So this was kind of like, a, you know, a, a test bed of like, you just trying things out. and I mean, Yeah. Can you imagine if you did go to college, how different it might have been? Yeah, I think you got, you know, I mean, obviously there's a place for that and you learn skills and I've had to learn some of them along the way and I mean, it's still... Could have, I can't cut good pattern to save my life. You see my podcast, my first podcast. <laughs> Actually, no, don't see my first. So there podcast. is a place, but I do think that sometimes in colleges they can try to mould you yeah. to an industry standard. Mm. And um, I think um, you know another bit of advice I would give is like you know okay you can learn some very important things from some of that, but try not to get moulded. Um, mm. You know. Because obviously I assume that the colleges probably think, well, you know, they're likely to get a job in one of these big multiples or this, that mm. and the other. So they kind of slightly try to squash them and mould them. And yeah. I think uh, that is something they've got to try to not let happen, you know. Yeah, almost like have the tools, develop the tools, have the tools, put them in a box, forget about them. Yeah, because I sometimes think I am, you know, lucky as well that I didn't because I never had anyone telling me, what I'm doing mm -hmm. had to change in any form. Yeah, but you were able to, true, but I also feel like maybe because you were so entrenched in culture and music and and the the, the movement. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean that that was kind of like your that was kind of like your schooling. Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> it was, I suppose. Yeah, it was. And then like I say, I learned as I went along. Mm. So you you can do it. You know, and that's the other thing. And I, another thing I always like to tell um, students and things that you can always like it's funny how things all fit in place mm. and something you might have studied doesn't necessarily mean what you'll end up doing I feel like it's a jigsaw and everything mm. you do comes in handy mm. but it's never too late to change as well because mm. I do remember I didn't know what I wanted to do when I was at school and uh you know I was very much the arts was really not looked up you know it was just nothing in my school oh, and yeah. I knew I didn't want to go into an office it wasn't my thing and uh 
didn't know what I wanted to do. And you were feeling this enormous pressure to kind of choose what you're going to do for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, uh, I was there. I know yeah, I mean. do you know what I mean? And yeah. I think someone, need, well, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not at school now, so maybe they do say this more now, but definitely not when I was at school. But you can also say to someone, well, you know, follow this now if that's how you're feeling. But, you know, who knows? And you can change any time. Mm, mm. You know, there's not, a, there's not an age cut-off limit that you can change. So true. So true. You can change career. You There's change no rules. Path. There's no rules. No. That's that's what art's about. That's what life's about. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, yeah, yeah. And your son. Yeah. Actor. Yeah, he, he well he was an actor. He's now more directing and writing and Casual, doing his own casually stuff. Casually dropping straight. That's cold. Yeah. <laughs> so he's really he's really a solid, motivated. Uh, uh, I have no clue what he's actually up to right. Now, but, that, um, but you know what's crazy is that sometimes when you, when you're given a, a clean slate, a clean sheet, you're you're actually able to do a lot more than when you get given some coordinates. Oh, this is how you direct. Oh, this is how you do a podcast. Yeah. Or this is how you do fashion. Like it doesn't, it, it kind of kills the, the energy for it a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, it can. It can. And I mean, he also like didn't go to drama school, mm. so you learn on the job. And my, that's amazing. Bizarrely, my younger son as well. Neither, none of them, co you know, I I tried to sort of bring them up that they've got to find their own way, mm. and they don't want to work for Cyberdog. You know, they mm. want to do their own thing. My younger ones, they're both arty. The younger ones, sort of, a really great artist, and he's still finding his way. So he's only seventeen. So that's so sick. But yeah, I think you can just find your way. Mm by just learning and experimenting, and you can change. But obviously, if you go to a, a, do a course in fashion, you are going to get those technical skills and some of those things that I didn't have, and um, and uh, they obviously come in handy. Yeah. Yeah, like, without taking anything away, there's also, you know, when you're in those environments, you meet other people, right? Yeah. You know? And you can bounce off each other. Yeah. So, you know, there's so many positives of also following mm. courses, and... Um, um, you know, I had that time to sort of learn and cut out, fit, but obviously if I'd had that um, opportunity mm. to have gone to college and learned those skills, mm. it would have made those early days easier. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah I never went to university or nothing like that. Mm. Sometimes I think to myself, oh, what if, but, but then you, yeah, that's quickly retracted by, again, the cultural currency. Ah, yeah, go, cultural <laughs> currency you, you get, right? Yeah. You know. What's the future, girl? What's the future for Cyberdog What's right now? What's the future? What's the future? Well, um, there's uh, the... Um, obviously, with this um, collections launch, um, during lockdown... Um, well, the first thing I did is started doing Zoom. Like, we never heard of Zoom, <laughs> had we? Who heard <laughs> yeah, yeah, of Zoom? Yeah. <laughs> now it's like... Zoom crew. Zoom. Um, <laughs> so I started very early doing some Zoom parties just to kind of bring the music and connect us because we were all Perfect. just like... So I, And then I had this sort of... Um, I did seeing how we were all having to be forced um, mm. to live virtually, and obviously that young people are already quite mm. virtual. In you know, I could see my son chats more to his mates through games or sure, yeah. other uh, apps and things. So um, I, I decided that I wanted to recreate the shop because the shop's such an icon, yeah. and and such an experience. And so when we had to close, because obviously that was tough, mm. really tough. And, uh, oh God, you know, let's, the, 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 you know, move on. Mm. But those, that early time and when we knew that and before we got offered the furlough, you know, the, the yeah. gut furlough scheme came in, it was like, Jesus, overnight you of were thinking, yeah. and some of these people had worked for me for years and years and years and you were thinking, I won't be able to afford yeah, to yeah, pay yeah, them. Because yeah. that's the uh, first people you think about, isn't it? It's those people you're like, oh, well, yeah. what are going to do with them? And yeah. uh, so then the first, so, uh, you know, then obviously I felt like, oh, okay, you know, mm. we can keep our staff and that, and that was a real relief. Wow. Yeah. Then I picked myself up and started doing these Zoom parties and um, organised it internally with people that were willing to sort of jump in and, and have a go and some DJ mates doing mm. sets. And, um, and then thought, well, you know, if we're going to do this, how can I bring in and, like, using the shop. So um, throughout the lockdown and beyond mm -hmm. till now, um, worked with uh, people to build a virtual representation of the shop. And that is where we did the launch um, virtually mm -hmm. at the same time as the in life, wow. real life event it was actually in this virtual build of the shop. So I'm hoping to bring more into that to make uh, that you could still shop in Cyberdog and have that exciting vibe, yeah. but do it virtually. So Zoom is 
a, a new way of life. Like, I, yeah. It's actually, I think it adds more value to the communication landscape. You know? Yeah. Though this is in Sansa, which is a, a, a virtual virtual. Oh, in a virtual? Yeah. Oh, okay, my bad. Wow. Yeah. Oh. So you can, you can join. Um, I mean, before it's very much a gaming platform, but, you know, it can, like Zoom, the yeah, new yeah. Zoom. It was yeah. like... Twitch as what, well. All these meeting, yeah, yeah, you know, they were like, for men in suits that maybe had to talk yeah, across yeah, yeah. The, the other part of the world, you know, um, we use it. So that's the other thing, use technology in a different way. Yeah. There's a, as a beatboxer, there's, this, there's a couple of games that people play online live and they're beatboxing. Yeah. And there's a whole new community yeah. online of gamers that are beatboxed to each other. Yeah. That just blows my so mind. So there's actually been positives, because like you yeah. were saying, I think you told me before we went on air, like how you you're, you now can interview people without having to worry yeah. about getting them in here. Yeah, it can be in Atlanta or yeah. Berlin or anywhere. It's and that's just... the thing, I think in one way, has connected mm. us a bit, because we're actually really communicating with people all over the world and easier, we're kind of just, mm. and, and still seeing them. Yeah. I mean, still doesn't, you know. Sometimes it's still nice to see someone in real life. It's it true, is, obviously. But it's still it, it, that connection that re, rejuvenates the, uh, the 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 rave ethos of of unifying. Yeah. Unity. Yeah. All connecting as one. Yeah. So whether we like it or not, one way or another, you know, there's no divide. It's all one unity and it's just communication. They can't stop it. Yeah, they can't stop it and they can't stop the people. The people are like, uh, we're really educated now and very aware um, of so many things. Yeah. Um, and technology yeah. also spreads it. Yeah. And so that's why I think um, a lot of, some good is going to come out and we're going to force changes. Mm. I feel that, you know, I feel that energy. Yeah. I feel that energy. Yeah, some of it comes in uh, ebbs and flows of like, okay, yeah, go and have an illegal rave now while it's COVID. That's a really bad idea. Yeah. But there is that, there is that, that, that determination in people that yeah. want to go against the rules, yeah. which, although in the wrong context, is, that's what, that's what culture is Yeah, their about. message is, yeah. is there, exactly. And people want to... Uh, connect yeah and uh so i think there is like a quite unified sort of feeling mm. um and uh, like you say maybe some places there you know it's not the time mm. for us all to meet in a field um but even <sighs> online and so on it's the energy you're feeling yeah. i feel that yeah i do too Promoting individuality, unification, and more <laughs> cyber dog is still alive and kicking even without the shop open at the moment. When's when? Will it no, go? the shop is it's open, back open now. now. It's back open now. It's back open. Yeah, so nice. when we could, we did reopen. Obviously, you know, skeleton stock, because I mean, you know, uh, we not many people were out. Mm -hmm. and, um, but now, new, re you know, everything's always changing. Yeah, yeah. So we're just trying to take it a day at a time and survive. Mm. I mean, I think one of the pluses is that we're quite an um, internal company, so mm. we could adapt because we make things mm. in-house. And, mm -hmm. and we're trying our best, like everyone else, and yeah. I think we're all trying to support other creatives. I mm. mean, you know, clubs, DJs, is so tough oh. at the moment. Oh, my God. So, you know, just trying to keep that going yeah. um, and trying to support each other, and you're hearing that a lot, mm. especially in the creative industries, because obviously it's um, hit us hardest, I think. As, as someone that's, that's been privy to, to, to the, the, the organism of club culture, you see things firsthand. You would have done, of course. Like, do you, do you see a forecast in what's going on here? What do you think the, what do you think the future is of, of uh, the, the, the scene as it is being, yeah, it, it, it's really taking impact, isn't it? Really it really is. And that is probably why you got these uh, people doing these illegal raves because people are really missing mm. that club and connection and fun yeah. that they had. I mean, you know, <clears throat> I think it all depends on what happens. You know, yeah. we ha we're all got to be realistic yeah. that, uh, you know, the next few months, <clears throat> I don't think uh, they're going to allow, the obviously, these clubs yeah. to open. So we, we've got to just all adapt for right now and keep connecting in whatever way mm. we can um, and and just wait for when we can make it safe to get back out. And yeah. um, I think it's really hard to predict mm. what the future is, but it will open again and we'll find one way or another um, of making that safe so that everyone can get back out and, yeah. 
and dance and party together. Party together, oh my God, it's going to be so we're bad. all missing that. Oh man. But you know, you've brought an air of optimism because you, you did say at the top of the show that throughout the, the decades of music, there's always been suppression. There's always been suppression. And I see it almost like that again. And there will be no stopping it. Mm. We'll find our way, whatever mm. way that is. And that's why there is so many online, you know, it's online parties and, you know, obviously we just had another restriction, but, you know, that groups were open again. We're making fun. We're making those connections any way we can. Mm -hmm. We will. We will. Always will. Yeah. <laughs> Terry Davian now. thank you so much, darling. Royalty <laughs> in the place, motherfucker. What do you know about that? All right, cyber dog striking with a vengeance alongside Killer Keller podcast. Thank you so much, doll. No, oh, thank you. You want to do share and share alike? Like, tell a friend, tell a friend. We are like in was out of fashion. You stay lucky, all right? Peace. <laughs> that were good. Yeah? yeah. You like that?